Welcome Keeling World Culture students. This is the online video lecture about the six elements of geography. Make sure that you read along, actively listen, process the information, and then record examples that we talk about. Examples are given in blue, and every time you see a check mark, it means you need to write something in. You can use your own examples that you like or examples that we provide. Feel free to pause or rewind the video at any time to make sure you get the notes and understand the concepts. You can take the notes at your own pace. Geography is the study of the earth. Geographers use tools, technology, and spatial thinking to locate and analyze people, places, and environments on the earth's surface. What is the first element of geography, Ms. Crouch? Well, Mr. Shof, it's location. The first element is location. Location is simply asking, where are you in this world? We have two ways to describe your location. The first is absolute, which you already learned about since we talked about longitude. It's a simply telling us your exact location on the Earth's surface using latitude and longitude. And it doesn't have to be your location. It can just be a location that you're studying. Good point. The second part is relative location. This is more common because this is describing the location of a place compared to or in relation to someplace else. For example, Keeling Middle School is located one mile east from downtown Austin. Example two. Mexico is south of the United States. So think about it. How many places do you need at minimum to give a relative location? Mr. Shove? I wasn't listening to what you were saying. <laughs> the answer is two. <laughs> at least two. Let's move on to number two. The second element of geography is place and region. And that is, answers the question, what is a place like? So we know where it is now. Now we want to talk about what that place is like. And we use two ways to describe a place, physical and human characteristics. Physical characteristics are natural or non-man-made. They're things that humans did not create. Uh, things like landforms, bodies of water, vegetation, animals, climate, natural resources. We didn't create any of those. Human characteristics, on the other hand, are human-created things. They can be cultural items, language, religion, beliefs, food, architecture, all that stuff we talked about with the cultural ABCs. They can also be man-made or created items like boundaries or infrastructure like roads or technology that we create. Region is another aspect of element two and that describes how places or what characteristics places share with other places. Um, so they help categorize a place and tell us what places have in common basically. There's four types of regions. The first one is a physical region, and that's an area that shares physical features. And a great example would be the Rocky Mountains because they all share the physical characteristic of the Rocky Mountains, or the Great Lakes. So you can refer, refer to the states that are bordering the Great Lakes as the Great Lakes states. We don't have to mention every single one individually. Political regions are areas that share political goals or features. Countries, states, counties, school districts, those are all political regions. Economic regions are areas that share economic goals. A great example is the European Union, which is a group of European countries, not all European countries, but some that share a common currency. Ms. Crouch, is there an example of the economic region in our part of the world that we could use? NAFTA. What is NAFTA? NAFTA was a North American free trade agreement between Canada, the US, and Mexico that allowed free trade across our borders. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, cultural regions are the last region and they're areas that share cultural characteristics. A great example of a cultural region in our own country would be uh, Chinatown in San Francisco. There's even one in Austin, but Chinatowns are small areas or neighborhoods that share the characteristic of Chinese culture. When you go to a Chinatown in San Francisco, you might feel like you're actually in an Asian country. Uh, you'll hear uh, Chinese spoken, you'll see lots of often Chinese restaurants and Chinese owned businesses. Another good example of a cultural region is French Canada. Within the English speaking country of Canada, there is a region that, is, uh, that shares the characteristic of speaking French as their common language. 
The third element is physical system. Now the earth is continuously formed and affected by large natural systems. Now a system is just many parts working together. When you say, when we say physical system, we're talking about how specific natural or physical forces affect the physical environment. It's important to understand that if you're trying to describe a physical system, you cannot just list some physical characteristics there. Rather, a physical system explains how different physical characteristics interact with each other. There are uh, four large physical systems that we call geospheres that affect or shape the Earth. The first uh, system is atmosphere. This includes the air surrounding the Earth. An example would be wind currents, uh, the ozone layer. The second is lithosphere. Lithosphere just refers to the solid crust covering the Earth. Plate tectonics and volcanoes would be examples of a, physical si of a lithosphere physical system. Third is hydrosphere. This is the system involving all of the water on or near the Earth. An example would be the water cycle, um, the polar ice caps, which are melting, and moisture in the air. The last one is biosphere. Biosphere is just refers to all living organisms on Earth and how they interact together. This could be the food webs, such as predator versus prey. This could also be species interdependence, which just means when two different organisms depend on each other. A good example is the remora fish, which attracts itself to a shark's uh, belly and then eats the scraps that fall out of the shark's mouth. All four spheres interact and are almost always found in a single place. A good example of that would be snow on a mountain, hydrosphere, melting into a river, which then causes erosion of the riverbed, which is the lithosphere. So that's hydrosphere and lithosphere interacting. Yay! Woo Fourth system is human systems. And this answers the question, how do humans inhabit that place? So that involves how humans settle in places, how they move around in that, in, in that place and between places, and how they cooperate and conflict with each other in those places. Settlement patterns discusses how people are distributed, whether there's a high or low population, whether they live close together or further apart. Movement can involve human movement, the movement of goods, or move the movement of ideas. Um, an example of human movement would be immigration or migration. Uh, for example, immigrants from Central America coming to the U.S. for better economic opportunities. So isn't immigration and immigration pretty much the same thing, but you're just describing them based on the country they're either coming from or going to? That's right. In fact, if you're using immigration with an I, it means that you're coming to a place. If you're really using emigration with an E, it means that you're going away from a place. So let's say, Ms. Crouch, that I decide, and I'm Mr. Shove, to move to uh, French Canada that you were talking about earlier. So place. I would be immigrating with an E out of the United States, but then I would be immigrating with an I into Canada? That's correct. Good. I'm glad I have it now. You, I was very confused. You very got confused. It. The next type of movement is the movement of goods, and that's items that are uh, created by humans or used by humans. So it's just trade. It's a fancy word for trade. An example would be that the US imports a lot of oil every day from about 80 different countries around the world. A movement of ideas can be a fad or fashion, technology, or cultural ideas even. And a, a very specific word we use is cultural diffusion, which is the movement of cultural ideas and cultural characteristics. The last uh, part of human systems is cooperation and conflict, or how different groups of people get along. Uh, for example, during World War II, the US and Great Britain and France were all allies, so they cooperated against the Axis powers. And currently, there's some conflict in the Middle East we'll be discussing in a few weeks. So the fifth element is environment and society. In the third element, you learned about physical systems. In the fourth element, you learned about human systems. Now the fifth element specifically talks about how they interact together, how people interact with their surroundings. So it basically we want to think of it in three different ways. It involves how people depend on their environment, adapt to their environment, and modify their environment. Let's take the first one. Depend on their environment. Humans require some things to survive on this earth. For example, we require clean air, clean water, food resources, um, specific shelter from the elements to survive. Since we depend on the environment, we also end up adapting to the environment as well. 
Many times, humans will actually change their behavior to adapt to certain environments that they live in. For example, in Austin, we wear cooler materials to adapt to the hot summers, our wonderful dry fit fabrics. Mm. Another example would be at higher altitudes and high mountains, our blood adapts to the lower oxygen levels, creating more red blood cells. Finally, um, the last one is modify. Modify is just a fancy word for change. This is when humans actually change their environment to suit their need. A good example to, would be to uh, a place building dams to prevent flooding. If you live in Central Texas, which you do since you're listening to this, the Highland Lakes are basically a way for Central Texas to control flooding and also to provide water. And they change the or modify the environment by creating lakes behind the dams that didn't exist before. So they're flooding Wait, large Wait, so is the lake, is the reservoir a man-made, a natural, a physical characteristic, or is it a human characteristic? Well, I like to say that the dam itself is a human characteristic, but that the lake is kind of both. It wouldn't exist naturally without humans building that dam, but it is a body of water. Gotcha. The very last element is uses of geography. So it's really where we put all the previous elements together and talk about, okay, so what good does it do us to study all this? It helps us, studying all of these elements in geography helps us interpret the past and present and plan for the future. So geographers use all the previous five elements as well as tools like maps and geographic information systems to help them do this. Uh, we've talked about Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, but it's a computer software program that helps create maps and analyze geographic data to answer questions and problems. We're going to be talking in class about a real-world example of a use of, a use of geography and applying all five of these elements uh, to a real-world scenario. So you don't have to do anything for that for now. Well, thank you for listening.